Hey friends, in this video, I'm going to take you through step by step what I did to finally get good at drawing anatomy and poses. I can draw like this now, but when I first started, my drawings looked like this. And even though I slowly improved over time, I always felt like it was my biggest weakness until I did a two month training arc, which changed everything. I'll be sharing with you all the details of that training arc so you can do the same. From the exact practice methods I used, to the studies I did, how much time I was spending, and the key lessons I learned along the way. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Ori, and let's get started. So the hardest part of this training arc was actually finding the right practice method. At the time, I thought I tried everything. I bought and went through a bunch of expensive anatomy books and courses. I did gesture drawings, croquis sketches, and detailed anatomy studies. I also studied how other artists drew their anatomy and poses. Still, nothing seemed to be working, and I wasn't seeing much improvement. I felt stuck at my current level, and I kept repeating the same mistakes. It was by complete chance when, early last year, I saw that Chan, a Korean artist I really admired and had been following for a while, made a post saying he released the course. When I saw he had a whole section on figure drawing, I knew I had to check it out, and the practice method he shared in it was really game-changing for me. Here's what I learned. So according to Chan, our goal when practicing the figure is to be able to create a mannequin in our mind that is accurate, we can move around freely, and quickly visualize. And the better we become at this, the more stable and precise our figures will be when we draw. The way we go about creating this mannequin is by dividing the figure up into three parts. Movement, which are the movements and poses the figure can make, including how natural they look. Proportion, which is stylizing the proportions of the figure. And detail, which are the details of the body that we want to emphasize to make the figure look appealing. In the course, Chan refers to this as line, but I think that might be a bit confusing for some people. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to call it detail. The order of importance is also the same. The first is movement, because even if our proportions and details look great, if the character is walking on all fours, it's gonna look ridiculous. The second is proportions, because even if we draw beautifully detailed muscles, if the proportions are off or weird, the figure isn't gonna look good. And finally, detail comes last, because if the character is wearing clothes, a lot of the body details get hidden, so it's not as important. But if you draw sexy pin-up style characters, then details might be a priority for you. So how do we actually start practicing this? Well, even though movement is the most important aspect, we actually need to be able to draw the figure first before we can add movement to it. So we start by learning the proportions and details through these three steps. First, practice the individual body parts, with the priority being torso over the limbs. Because if you get the limbs wrong, you only have to fix them. But if you get the torso wrong, you have to adjust everything. The next step is to practice drawing the parts in different angles and rotations. And after that, combine them together to form the whole figure. This way of practicing parts individually before putting them back together was really game changing for me because up until then, a lot of my figure practice was either coming from drawing the whole figure through cocky sketches or just making complete illustrations. But that was actually inefficient because as Chan points out, drawing the entire body takes a long time, which makes it hard for us to get enough reps in to become familiar with it. And when I heard all of that, it actually started to make sense why I wasn't making much progress. At the time, it would have taken me about an hour to accurately draw the figure because I would make a ton of errors and constantly have to fix things. But if I just focused on one part, like the torso, I could do 10 in the same time. So I literally could do 10 times more reps and thus improve on the torso 10 times faster. Now you might go, hold on, isn't that the same thing? Sure, you'd improve 10 times faster on just the torso, but the total time would end up being the same, right? Since when you draw the whole figure, you're practicing 10 times the number of parts. I thought the same, but there were two things I came across from reading books on how to learn effectively, which helped change my mind. The first is that there's this thing called the forgetting curve, which shows how we naturally forget things over time if we don't do anything about it. Some estimates say that we forget 50% each day that passes. I know, crazy, right? Thankfully, we can prevent this by recalling the thing we want to remember. And in our case as artists, we can do this by actually drawing the thing. Doing more reps helps to make the memory even stronger so we lose less of it over time. This is why it's more effective to practice just a single body part and get more reps in versus taking a long time to draw one whole figure. I also found that the fact it's easy to do means we're more likely to stick with the practice because it keeps our motivation up. I think one of the problems I had before was because drawing the whole figure took a long time and was very difficult to do, I would be inconsistent with the practice and then the forgetting curve would just start to kick in. The second reason is that the more complex the thing is, the more mistakes we're likely to make. Okay, imagine you're in Japan traveling and you want to go to the train station. 
You ask for directions, and a kind stranger tells you, oh, it's just straight ahead. Chances of you getting lost is basically 0%. Unless you're like me, and of course you're going to walk the complete opposite direction each time Google Maps says to go straight. Now compare that to if the stranger tells you to go down that street, turn left, walk 50 meters, go inside the first building on the right, and down the escalator. Chances of you forgetting a step and getting lost is much higher. I mean, I don't even remember what I just said. And it's the same thing with figure drawing. We make less errors by focusing on just one part because it's simpler. And that saves us time because there's less things we need to fix. So my plan for phase one of the training arc was to learn each body part through the following cycle. Learn the bones and muscles of the body part by studying references from books, videos, photos, and 3D models. And as part of the course, Chan actually includes a whole bunch of his own figure sketches, which I found super useful to learn from. So you're going to see them appear a lot in the studies I'm going to show you. Next is to draw turnarounds of the body part from memory. The key here is to draw it in stylized proportions since the whole point is to build a mannequin in our heads that we can use when we draw our characters. And the last step of the cycle is to reflect how well the drawings turned out by comparing it with the references from step 1. Then after learning each body part, I would combine it with other parts and do the same cycle for them too. Finally, to fight off the forgetting curve, I also made it a habit every day to try and sketch down from memory what I learned the day before. By the way, if you want to learn more about the draw reflect learn cycle, I made a whole video on it which I'll link to down below so you can check it out after watching this one. So here's the actual studies I did during the trainer arc. I hope that by seeing my journey through it and how I improved over time, you'll get a good idea of what it looks like in action and feel inspired to do it on your own. I'll also share some practical tips for each body part and the key takeaways I learned. Oh, and if you're enjoying the tutorial so far, I hope you consider subscribing so you don't miss out when I make a new one. So for the pelvis, I focused on learning just a simplified version of it because the real thing is super complicated. I focused on just getting the proportions and general shapes right, since I could always go back and learn the details if I need to. One useful thing about the pelvis that I learned was how it's not straight up vertical, but actually tilted down a little like this. So it's not straight up like this. And apparently there's more of a tilt in women than in men. For the ribcage, I also found that a simplified version of it was also all I needed. Similar to the pelvis, the ribcage is also not vertically straight up but tilted back a little. So the torso naturally has an arch to it like this. I used to avoid drawing turnarounds like this because it was kind of boring. But now I don't really mind it because they are so good at helping you understand the form. It's like you're inputting a 3D model into your head that you can use whenever you draw. Now, even though most of the skeleton gets hidden when you actually draw the figure, I found that having learned them first was helpful as it gives us more of a solid understanding of how the figure is actually structured and that makes our figure drawing more accurate and consistent. At this point, I remember I was trying to figure out a good way to simplify the torso to basic shapes. I think at the time, I settled on a roundish box and roundish trapezium and simplifying it to basic shapes is useful when you're first starting to learn it because they can act as guidelines, which we can then draw the figure on top of. One interesting thing I learned about the legs was how the knee kind of changes shape as the leg bends or extends. Also, when you're drawing the legs down, it can really help to draw these perspective lines to help you place them on the ground properly. For the feet, I felt okay with just getting down the basic shape since I usually won't be drawing them in detail for most of the illustrations I draw. And again, we can always go back and learn the details when we need to. Finally, it was time to combine the leg with the torso and it's actually starting to look like a figure now. But I had a lot of trouble with this first attempt. I found that when I practiced them separately, I had no idea how the proportions of each part would relate to the rest of the figure. So the first time you join them, it's going to be way off. The way I fixed this proportion issue was by comparing what I drew with both a realistic 3D model and Chan's figures. This helped me understand what I was doing wrong from both a realistic and stylized point of view. So I'd compare and then try to fix it. I find that it's really useful to write down notes since it can lead to deep insights such as Chan's proportions are really elegant and beautiful. Long legs are nice. Yes, Pastori, long legs are nice. <laughs> the next one's an actual insight. My proportions took too much from reality which does not lead to a nice result when translating it to casual. Now, casual is the term Chan uses for anime stylization, which I assume is Korean. In the illustration world, this is also sometimes referred to as deform since we're deforming things from real life when we stylize. I think this next note is from the lesson. 
the moment we draw the form, we are no longer drawing correct or realistic proportions. And we want to push the proportions to make it look more beautiful. This was a big breakthrough for me since it kind of lets you off the hook. Like, hey, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate to reality since anime figures are already incorrect by default. And in fact, we do want to push the proportions a little so it looks even better. Of course, it doesn't mean we can disregard reality completely. We still need to learn how to draw the figure accurately enough so that it doesn't look unnatural to the viewer. It took a couple of days and many repetitions, but I started to feel the figure was finally coming together in my mind, as you can see here. Some useful things I learned about the arm was that you can think of the movement as balls and chains that link together. And that the basic form of the forearm is basically a flat box with some muscles wrapped around it. The arms took longer than expected to practice because their form changes depending on whether the palm is facing up or whether it's facing down. One useful tip I learned about the elbows was how it kind of has these three modes when viewed from the side. No bumps when it's straight down, one bump when it's bent 90 degrees, and two bumps when it's bent more than 90 degrees. When I finally combined the arms with the rest of the figure, there was this feeling of accomplishment since it was finally starting to look complete. But there was still one last part to study, which are the hands. The hands are really complicated, and I think I spent more time practicing them than any other part, but some of my key takeaways were the fingers actually look shorter on the palm side than on the opposite side, as you can see here, and that there are three fat pads on the palm to remember, the pinky, top, and thumb pads. These make up the form of the palm. Also, you can separate the hand up into three parts when studying them. The wrist, the palm, and the fingers. Here's a comparison of the hand turnarounds I drew before and after practicing the hands. And according to the dates I put, apparently I spent two weeks just practicing them. Finally, it was time to combine everything together to form the whole body. And at the end of this first training arc, this was the figure I could now draw without references. Ironically, after spending all that time practicing the hands, I found that it just took too much time to draw them in detail when doing these turnarounds. So I ended up just simplifying them. But I know I can draw them in detail if I need to. There were still plenty of things that I needed to improve on, but I was pretty happy with the progress, considering that my first attempt one month ago looks like this. By the way, the reason I've been able to show you Chan's sketches and other images from the course is because Colosso is kindly sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard of them before, Colossal works with top creators to create courses in various fields such as illustration, animation, concept art, and 3D. Also, if you've been enjoying the tips in this video, make sure to give Chan's course a look because he goes into much more detail and provides many more useful tips on not just figure drawing but everything else in the illustration process like composition, lighting, design, and color. And personally, I learned a ton from him. There'll be a link to it below, along with a special code you can use to get a discount. So how long did this all take? According to the dates I wrote, I did this between 27th March to 11 May 2022. So it was over 46 days, which is just about one and a half months. I also used this free app called Toggle to track all of the time I spent on the training arc, since I find it helps with motivation to see the practice hours stack up. And according to it, I spent 126 hours and 49 minutes, which divided over 46 days is two hours and 45 minutes a day. So basically, I just practiced for a few hours a day as sort of a warm up exercise before I'd go work on an illustration. Once we've got a working mannequin, it's time to practice moving it around and posing it. The method Chan recommends for this is one, analyze the reference. The point of this is to accurately understand the information we are looking at. To do so, we can simply trace over the reference and analyze how the different parts are structured. And since this is movement practice, instead of focusing on the details of the body, we want to concentrate on finding the general flow of the pose. He recommends not skipping this step since it's really beneficial. The next step is to draw the figure in your stylized proportions. Chan recommends breaking this up over three sketches. The first sketch is for capturing the movement. The second is to fix the proportions. And the third is to add details. He mentions that breaking the drawing up into steps like this does mean it takes a long time to do, but with illustration, people just see the final product and not how long it took you to draw it. So the most important thing is to take a piece to a solid completion, even if it takes a long time. In the end, what we have to practice drawing a lot is various poses from various angles and the same pose from various angles. By the way, quick note that in my previous video, I talked about using the CCC method for doing studies and said you shouldn't trace. 
Although it's true that you generally won't learn if all you're doing is tracing, it slipped my mind that, as Chan noted, it can be a good idea to trace when analyzing the reference to make better sense of it. So I just wanted to make that clear in case people were confused. So here's the actual studies I did during phase two of the training arc. To get a hang of Chan's method, I first tried copying the examples he gave, following it closely step by step. Then I jumped straight in and grabbed some photos with poses I wanted to study and tried method out. So analysis, movement, proportions, and then details. I found that it just took too much time if I had to draw the face and the hair each time I do this study, so I decided to leave it out for most of the time. And at the start, I was still trying to figure out how to best capture the movement during the first sketch. I first tried drawing the basic 3D shapes of the ribcage and the pelvis, but I realized it kind of made the drawing a bit stiff. So I then experimented with getting looser and more simplified with the first sketch, so I could capture the gesture better. For the second round of studies, I tried using 3D poses, which I got from the free reference website Pose Maniacs. With 3D poses, you can change the camera angles, so you can easily get references for drawing the same pose from different angles. Of course, 3D is missing the natural details of the body, which is why it's good to balance them with studying from photos too. This exercise was actually pretty fun to do because it felt like I was finally applying everything I learned so far in a way that could be directly used in an illustration. Finally, at the same time I was doing the movement practice, I was also doing more torso practice since Chan recommends practicing it a lot. This second training arc was a lot shorter and took place between 16 to 24th May. So that's just eight days and I logged in about 60 hours for it. So that comes down to about seven and a half hours a day doing the movement practice followed by torso practice. So at the end of the two months training arc, these were the kind of figures I was able to draw. I'm still checking and comparing these with references because it's never going to be perfect and there's always a lot left to learn. But the amount of understanding I gained was just amazing. I think it was from having done this practice that I finally felt like I understood how to draw the figure properly for the first time. And of course, the point is to keep practicing and never stop because the more you do, the more you'll improve. So since then, I made it a habit to regularly practice drawing the figure. For example, during the training arc, I didn't get to draw the turnarounds from different angles. So I recently tried drawing them from higher and lower angles. It was really cool to see how much more I've been able to improve since then, especially as someone who initially felt that figure drawing was this gigantic frustrating wall that they couldn't get over. But you know, looking back, I think the most important thing I learned was to never give up and believe that even though it might take time, I could learn anything. Time and effort spent practicing does pay off. And even if we can't see it in the moment, the EXP points we gain continue to stack up. And sometimes we might not see a change for a very long time because it can take a lot of points to reach the next level. But eventually, we will level up. And when we do, we might just surprise ourselves at the progress we've made if we don't stop. Anyway, if you've gotten this far into the video, thanks for watching. And you'll probably like Chan's course too, so do check it out. Also, my training arc actually didn't stop there. I continued with another arc focusing on the head, and you can find out the three best tips I learned from it in this video. If you want to see more tutorials, make sure to subscribe and thank you so much for watching. This was Ori and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!